Welcome to the Tech School Conference Constituency Report. God is like an awesome God. The textbook for all ministry within the Adventist Church is the Word of God itself, the Bible. Every church has uh, its own story. We have just celebrated the payoff of our of our mortgage, of over $600,000 mortgage. I didn't know there was a Lubbock, Texas. We inherited not only the building, but everything. We got the tables, we got the chairs, we got the file cabinets, we got the scotch tape. God is doing amazing things through our youth here in our conference. The evangelism does work. And through the conference, the Texaco conference, we found that they really push the evangelism issue, and that's what I like about Texaco. Over the last four years, our senior youth program has expanded. Our pathfinders, our Christian education, and our community services has also grown. We weren't organized, we didn't know what we were doing, and the people knew it, but they stuck with us. We have helped people, not only the Texaco Conference, but outside the Texaco Conference as well. We have lay members who have garnered baptisms. It is a wonderful feeling whenever you, you dip somebody in that water and they come out with the Holy Spirit and they glow. I mean, I know I did. My dad wouldn't build his own home, not until we had God's house. I would like to welcome everybody to our new sanctuary. Since 1997, we have doubled our membership. We have seen 77 new buildings purchased or remodeled to make them more attractive. We now rejoice that in 2013, we have almost 12,000 members, 80 churches, and over 36 pastors in our Texaco Conference. I talked to the board, I said, this church is made up of old people. And if we don't grow, we're going to die because we're going to be dying off in a few years. So I talked them into a video uh, projector. Then I said, we're going to have what we call video evangelism. But next, the next thing, we got the projector. How are we going to get a crowd? So I asked our pastor what he thought of the food bank and he thought it was a great idea so we researched it and started. Welcome to our food bank in Tulia, Texas. This is our food room and uh, we have our canned goods stacked here on pallets. We have two freezers. The first three months it was like a Chinese fire drill. We weren't organized, we didn't know what we were doing and the people knew it but they stuck with us. Most of the help most of our, our workers here are not members of this church. They're members of the community. And they love this thing. This neighborhood is not really the best neighborhood. We had a problem one time. Some of our pallets that the food bank wants back were taken. So I mentioned to the group that we were missing these pallets and the food bank wanted them back. If they didn't get them back, maybe they would stop bringing us food. In three days, the pallets were back. We have had no problem in this neighborhood since. People are very careful about this church in this neighborhood. They know who we are, what we do. And, uh, and we're well thought of in this neighborhood. A lot of churches can do this, but it takes dedication. And it takes some money, but I go out and get it from businesses. But I'm in business, and I know businessmen here. But somebody that can, they, they're willing to help when they realize you're helping the community. We've gotten uh, grants occasionally from Walmart. The food bank gives us a grant once in a while. We pay 16 cents a pound, so a 18 ounce box of cereal cost us 18 cents to give away. The city has given us a grant uh, a time or two. Uh, a small ones are five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. They add up in addition to what the members are doing. But what you have to do is decide this is a priority. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was carrying a box out. They were going to take to a lady that was ill and needed some food. He saw me was coming down the middle of the street in his electric wheelchair and he made a straight line for me. He tried to talk to me and I couldn't understand him. Finally he said, hungry, hungry. 
I said, you're hungry. You like potatoes? Yes. I gave him some potatoes. It was a Monday. I said, you come tomorrow night. We will give you a box of food. He has been here every Tuesday night for three and a half years except four. We've learned to communicate. He loves us. We love him. He comes to church from time to time. I have never been so busy in my life. We've had more baptisms here lately. We're going to have one this Sabbath. But the Lord's given me the strength to do it. I have a full-time job. You are welcome. You have a good evening. Thank you. You too, I teach this Bible class every Sunday night, conduct prayer meeting, and uh, preach it once or twice a month. And uh, I've been so busy that I haven't had time to think about anything else. But the Lord's work in my business, and the Lord's blessed us in both. We do this once a week. We do around 130 families, and it's around 490 to 500 and some people. There's hardly 5,000 people in town, so that's 10%. We have a pretty good sized footprint in this town. And the reason we do it once a week, and we are the only food bank pantry in the High Plains Food Bank District that does it weekly, is because I want to show 52 videos a year to the people rather than 12. Right now, no matter what you've done, no matter how much pain you've caused, no matter what you're going through at this moment, We've had some baptisms as a result. We have people coming to our Bible classes and church that are not Adventist because of it. Our church is beginning to grow. Well, our future is right there on the steps. Look at that. Uh, a church that has no children is a dying church. This church is full of them on Sabbath morning. We have more non -ad Most of the children attending are non Adventists. I haven't seen a Sabbath in the last year that we didn't have Two, two to six or eight non-Adventists in this small church, that's, a, that's big. Good morning, my name is Kathy Workman and we're here at El Paso Adventist Junior Academy and I'm the head teacher here and I teach grades five through eight. Our school also has um, three other teachers. We have Joanna Tarango that teaches uh, first and second and we have Maya Reyes that teaches third and fourth and we have Lisa Clifford that teaches our preschool kinder class. We do have a conference and the staff and the leadership where education is very important to them. And we see that in what they give us. Our new students want to be involved in the worship service. They want to pray. They want to talk about God. And so we gave our students the daily Bible that they could read in a year. You know, how you have the checkoffs and stuff. And you know, and they're doing it, you know? They're doing it, and they're taking it out during time that they have between their grades. So I tell them it's not only important to read it during um, maybe before going to bed or the first thing in the morning, but you can read the Bible anytime. It doesn't have to be a set specific time. Well, the coolest thing I've learned in Bible is how God is like, an awesome God. He's like the father of everything. And it's not only the church coming in and volunteering. It's the conference. The conference supports us. Every church has uh, its own story. And our church is not an exception. We were just struggling for more than 30 years, trying to, to have a better location, trying to have a better sanctuary. And finally, God uh, just performed a miracle for us. Welcome to Española Bali, Bilingual Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Ruben Rodriguez and I'm the pastor of this beautiful church. We have been here for more than a year. It's very interesting because we were just uh, about to build a, a sanctuary in the other side uh, of the uh, city, but uh, we found out that this building was for sale and we decided to uh, just look into that and Praise the Lord, we are here, and uh, we uh, have been uh, just enjoying this uh, location. Welcome to our sanctuary. I would like to show you what we have here. The purpose of this building, the purpose of the church, is to uh, share the good news of God's plan for, for this world. And in fact, uh, that was the reason why we were just struggling for so many years, because we wanted to have a better place we wanted to share the good news in this valley. And um, since we came over here, 
the church has uh, been growing and we have an attendance of average of uh, 80 plus members. The youth led by Diane Cordova and my wife Tyra have been instrumental to uh, making this church grow. In fact, last year we had a crusade with them uh, and uh, the result uh, was uh, 18 souls won for the Lord. Stewardship is a way of life in the Texaco Conference. For years, there has been faithful commitment and sacrificial giving. Listen to these comments from the Dalhart Church. Parents, teach your children by example, like my parents did me, to have a good estate plan and to teach their children to pay honest tithes and offerings because there will always be a blessing. My dad wouldn't build his own home, not until we had God's house. My dad and his twin brother, Rue Horton, built the first little church here in Dalhart. And it was in the early 40s when my dad and his brother f finished that church. And we worshiped in that church until approximately seven years ago. And by that time, there were several of us who were unable to get up and down the stairs to the basement for our potluck. And so we really felt that we need to build a new church. And my aunt, she left some money for the land. Mother had put most of her assets in my brother's and my name. But she had still wanted to do more for the Lord. I felt that it would be such a great legacy to leave a church in honor of my mother and my dad. And we went ahead and built the new church by faith. Right before she passed away, she picked out the stained glass windows the patterns, and exactly where she wanted them placed on the new church. And I can't wait till heaven to share with my mother and dad what a difference this little church has made and what a light it has shown in our community. Just want to say thank you for your continued commitment to stewardship in this conference as tithes and offerings have been continuing to grow. And if you don't have a will or made arrangements for your final estate, we would like to encourage you to contact the Plan Giving Department here at the conference office. My name is Russell Ballou. I'm the head elder of the Dalhart Seventh-day Adventist Church, Dalhart, Texas. We're sitting in my industrial supply store here in Dalhart. God has blessed me through the years so, tremendously. We started in 1984. We started in a little old shop, rented a shop, had two little machines, and here we've got Three, four big buildings here, all full of machines. We've got employees. We've got four children. I've got a beautiful wife. But it really didn't start hitting me until 1999. We went to an evangelistic meeting set right here in Dalhart with Mel Matthews. He, he set through that, and when we got through, we decided we wanted to be Seventh-day Adventists. And we had been Sabbath keepers all of our lives. We had raised up in another Sabbath-keeping church. But when we were baptized, things changed. It was immediate for us that God's Holy Spirit entered my heart. And, and within six months, I was elder in a church. That had never happened. You know, that just don't happen. But we, we made, it, God blessed us. And then with our business and all of that, we kept blessing us, kept blessing us. We kept growing, expanding. Got all these buildings now. but. The main concern I have is that the evangelism does work. And through the conference, the Texaco conference, we've found 
that they really push the evangelism issue. And that's what I like about Texaco. The conference has helped us in many, many different ways. We've had pastors training, we've had evangelists come and, and do meetings in our church, and we've, we've baptized people. It is a wonderful feeling whenever you, you dip somebody in that water and they come out with the Holy Spirit and they glow. I mean, I know I did. My name is Mark Phillips. I'm the head elder at the Amarillo Seventh-day Adventist Church in Amarillo, Texas and I would like to welcome everybody to our new sanctuary. If you haven't been here, and I bet you haven't because we've just been in this place for about two months, we want you to know that God has been working in our congregation like we have never seen before in years. We were in massive debt on a beautiful building, but we just couldn't, we just couldn't make it work and we were just spinning our wheels and we came up with uh, a brilliant plan to just simply turn it all over to God and let him deal with it, and he dealt with it in just a few months. Our old building cost us about $17,000 a month in mortgage payments. There was a church that was using this space that they were renting, but they decided they wanted another spot. So they happened to see our old place, and they called one day and said they wanted to come over and look at it. So we let them come over, and about 25 or 30 people showed up and they went all through the building and then they went, disappeared for a while and a couple of weeks later they made us an offer. And it was a good offer but we, the building wasn't for sale so we told them to go away. But they kept coming back and we couldn't get rid of them. When you let God lead this is what can happen. Until finally they made us an offer we couldn't refuse and now they're the ones that are millions of dollars in debt on that building and we're here and we're financially much better off. This building is exactly the same square footage that we're using and it's only costing us four. And yes, we're in a shopping center or a strip mall, but we have purchased that strip mall and it gives us so much flexibility for future expansion and development of ministries within the church to reach out to this community. And we have this beautiful place to worship in now and we are not in any kind of financial ruin like we were before. My name is Gary Sutton. I'm an elder at the Amarillo Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we've just moved to a lo new location with our church and we're very excited about it. I came to be an Adventist four years ago. I had been exposed to prophetic teaching all my life. I received a notice in the mail of the Prophecy Seminar and was very interested in what the Adventist take would be on prophecy. Prior to that, I had been in ministry most of my life. I was raised in a parsonage, raised by parents who were profound Christians, trusted the Lord all their lives. So I told my wife I was gonna go. She said profoundly, I'm not going. I'm not gonna go down there. <laughs> so we had a discussion about it, but I was still determined to go. I've worked with many organizations uh, in ministry, many denominations over the course of my life and have never been zeroed in on one group or denomination, but zeroed in on Christians wherever I find them. I wanted to find out what the Seventh-day Adventist Church was all about and what their teaching of prophecy was, so I went. And my wife decided she would go and protect me. So we went together and uh, we began to uh, listen to the message uh, of prophecy from Seventh-day Adventist and began to visit with the pastor and others in the congregation. We found them to be very warm. And as we listened to the prophecy message during the seminar, we found that there were very few differences from what we actually had been raised with and believed and what was being taught. And so we became very interested and began to visit with the pastor. Uh, we certainly had much in common since I had been a pastor and my wife is also an ordained minister. So we had been heavily involved and as we began to visit, we formed, I say we formed, actually the Lord formed a very special relationship between the pastor and his wife and us and other members of the congregation as well because they were very warm in receiving. You see, they're not exclusive, they're very inclusive. When they come to know you, then they will uh, include you uh, in their group and in their circle. And they continue to reach out as well to others and that excites us. One of my genuine concerns was our ability to continue in ministry work as we had most of our married life. And also my wife because she had been involved in women's ministries a lot as well as youth ministries and she too 
wanted to continue in ministry. As we made the decision to join the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it was really quite easy because we didn't have to really change anything except for the fact that we learned to worship on the Sabbath day, the Lord's Sabbath. And we found that to be very restful, very rich, very beneficial. And for the first time, we felt like we were really falling under the full protection of the law of God. And that felt very good. Not just 90%, not nine out of 10, but all of it. And what a wonderful message it is. And I hope that all will come to know the message of God's Sabbath because He made it for us especially. And He continues to this day to meet us, set aside time each Sabbath to come and to meet with His people so that we may worship Him. The Amarillo Church was very inclusive of us with our ministry. In fact, when the next seminar came around, they had decided that the elders of the church would present the Prophecy Seminar. And even though I was not an elder of the church yet, but had been participating in music and other functions of the church, they invited me to speak in that. And so I preached part of the Prophecy Seminar. And it was a wonderful experience because I realized that God continues to include us, no matter what our age, no matter what limitations we have. He expanded my spiritual life by introducing me to the Adventist message. And it's such an easy message to carry and to present to others because it's true. It lines up with the Word of God perfectly. In fact, the textbook for all ministry within the Adventist Church is the Word of God itself, the Bible. And it's all about true worship, not the worship that's happened almost the last 1700 years, but the true worship that God intended when He gave the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath, because He remembers we should remember, and we should meet Him and genuinely worship Him on that day. We find that people are very open to that message. They're seeking, they're groping in the darkness, they're hurting and they need help. And if the Lord can use us as an instrument, as members of this church, we're excited about that possibility that He would trust us to touch those hearts. And that is a story about how God works in our lives. Hi, I'm Hector Quinones, and I'm happy to tell you about what we're doing in the Las Cruces district. In the Las Cruces Spanish, which is the mother church for the district, we have the privilege of watching 15 lay people going out to conduct their first evangelistic series for the year 2013-2014. These 15 individuals are going to be broken up into five different groups. And each one of these groups are in tasked with addressing the need of a district and area within the city of Las Cruces. Now, within the rest of the district, which encompasses Las Cruces English, Silver City, and Deming, these three churches have decided to work together to training one another and helping one another in their various different outreach ministries. We have lay people almost working as semi-pastors, giving out Bible studies. We have lay members who have garnered baptisms. It's just an exciting time to be a pastor in the Las Cruces district. Welcome to the future site of the Odessa Spanish Seventh-day Adventist Church. My name is Fernando Villegas and I'm the pastor of this district. Several years ago, we purchased this property. It's almost 11 acres on a very good corner, the Highway 385 and Crane Avenue right in front of us. And we purchased this land for 144,000 and we're actually able to pay off this debt in a very quick amount of time, about a year and a half. Uh, because of that, our focus now is on building a new building. And we're very excited about what God is gonna do through this church. My son Micah used to attend public schools here in Santa Fe and it was a daily basis that I was um, being called out on his inattention to authority, just getting into trouble. When we started this school, it was a dream. It's been a dream for a few years, about three or so years. And we didn't have computers, desks, tables, books, library books. Um, anything, even like little office supplies. <laughs> We've had um, the school now for one year and a quarter, and we have had a pretty good enrollment for just starting out when you're a brand new school. We've been 
having our school in the gymnasium of the Marcy Park SDA Church. And we just got this modular delivered October 1. And we're waiting for us to be able to occupy it. It has to have the electrical done and the city okay that it permits and a ramp needs to be built. And then we'll be able to occupy our new school. My son Micah has made huge strides socially and spiritually here at the Adventist Academy and it's been a huge blessing to our family. Welcome to the Midland English Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm, my name is Pastor Abner Razon and I'm pastor of the district here with uh, three churches including Odessa English and Big Spring uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church. At this moment we're experiencing uh, financial economic boom here in our area we have a lot of people coming in for jobs and the influx of new people and families in our church have uh, uh, we have experienced growth uh, together with the evangelistic meetings that we're doing with the crusades that uh, pastor sean robinson has conducted last year and also pastor leroy Chacon conducted a couple of months ago a big evangelistic meeting here and we are happy that uh, we have new members. Our challenge now is to keep on preaching God's word here in this area and uh, I know that uh, the, the work of the Lord will be successful because Midland or Dustin Big Spring is open to the gospel message. Welcome to the Lubbock Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so excited and blessed today because we are, we have just celebrated the payoff of our, of our mortgage, of over $600,000 mortgage, and God has blessed us immensely, not because of, of our great deeds, but because He loves to bless those who are in need and those who, who love Him and those who serve Him. And so He has worked through the members of our church and worked through, as you see here on the board, we have a list of, of, of a large number of people who have contributed to paying off this church. We have listed everybody that has donated to our campaign, to, our, to, to pay off the mortgage of this church. And our main slogan was that it wasn't about equal giving, but equal sacrifice. That everybody, that no matter how much you gave, if you gave over $100,000 or 50 cents, your name is on this plaque to show that you have followed Jesus' leadership and His impression on your heart to give as much as you were able to. Hi, I'm Kathy Flieger. This is my husband, Leland. We are members of the Lubbock Seventh-day Adventist Church. One thing that we had in that campaign, we had to give up something, something we had. We had to make a sacrifice. And the sacrifice became the thing that we were then able to fund our pledge. Well, this is actually the concept that we had at the time that we started the Vision to Victory campaign. And as we studied this building here, we found that this was going to cost us $1.3 million without any furnishings. And we didn't have enough money for that. And so then the concept was to take part of this building and add it on to the existing building at 8th Street, which would have been, frankly, a mess. <laughs> but, but that was our concept. That was where we started. And it was only then that, that we started looking at buildings. And unfortunately, this building that we're currently in now, it started out at around $3.2 million, which was totally out of range for our church and our facility. The sacrifice at that time that I made was to cease having my fingernails done, to stop wearing the false fingernails and it seems so trite now. I was amazed at how much money that I was able to save to, to put toward our pledge. The more we pledged, it seemed the more we were blessed. It wasn't until the members put money on the table that God stepped forward with the person with, with the offer to buy the old building. With the money that we received from the sale of the other property and all of the transfer fees and everything involved, we ended up with this building as I understand, this facility is the second largest facility in the Union Conference. It is almost 59,000 square feet. Having that size property, we found that to begin with, we rented back to the church we bought it from that they could run their daycare for $2,000 a month, which helped on our payments. We also rented to Sunday churches. We actually had three different Sunday churches that rented from us for a period of years and all of this helped with a $615,000 note on it. And that is the note that we have paid off 
in 10 years time. When the current owners of the building, when they moved, they built a new facility and they wanted everything new. They didn't want any of their old stuff. So we inherited not only the building, but everything. We got the tables, we got the chairs, we got the file cabinets, we got the scotch tape, we got the tablets, we, WD-40, hammers and screwdrivers. <laughs> they walked out and they just left everything. 10 years later, we're still using some of the same stuff that they left here. But once the church was paid off, we haven't had a single call from a, someone at Sunday Church asking to rent the building. <laughs> so, you know, hey, what does that tell me? You know, we, we, we are so blessed here with this facility that we have and, and, and the, the room that we have and the space. We've been uh, here for about 10 years. I've, been, I've just been so blessed to be here, the pastor. I've been, been here for about a year and a half now, and it's just been a wonderful blessing to be the pastor of this church. It is just an amazing group of people. Not only the facility, but the people here are just absolutely amazing. And I wanted to show you also this facility here that it was designed by some of our uh, Texas Tech grad students. He was, a, he was an architect at Texas Tech and he came here and they had a passion for youth ministries and so they designed us this, this facility for the collegiate classes and for the youth that we can do ministry here. This is actually our collegiate classroom as well. We do the Sabbath school class and we also do a Saturday night youth vespers here and, and various other events. It's not about the facility, it's about the people and what God has done through His people. All that he does on this earth, he chooses to do it through us. I don't know why he chooses to work through us, but he does. And he does amazing things that's beyond our comprehension. And we just praise him for that. This is our fifth year uh, with our school here at the Lubbock Junior Academy, our elementary school. And I personally have uh, three boys in that school. And it is just a wonderful place for them to learn. Not only learning their, their, their you know, math, science, and, and all that stuff, but really learning about Christ. And please take a look at my beautiful, intelligent, and gracious students. Hi, my name's John. I'm from uh, Mora, New Mexico, and I'm here to tell you about my recent mission trip to Rwanda. Prior to going to Rwanda two months ago, I had never even set foot in a pulpit. Six months ago, I had a problem even standing in front of a crowd and professing my faith. We baptized 668 people in three weeks period of time in just one small region of northern Rwanda almost 700 people, I can share the love that Jesus has for each one of us. And next I'm going to be doing an evangelistic series in Mora consisting of 22 nights to bring the same message that we took to Rwanda on to the people of Mora. Welcome to Sandia View Elementary. This is Bonnie Garner speaking. I'm so excited to tell you what's happening here. We have 93 students. We have a great mission field right here in our backyard. And part of that mission is to reach out to our community. The training is done right here at the school because we have a significant number of non-Adventists. And that gives a tolerance for others as well as others' beliefs and cultural differences. Hi, my name is Barbara Martinez. I am a teacher here at Sandia View Elementary School. I've been teaching for eight and a half years. I see personally what it's done for my children. They've come to develop a really close relationship with the Lord. And this is my daughter, Gabriella. She's been here also since kindergarten. I've always wanted to be a missionary doctor and help people all around the world, not just in the United States. One of the things I really enjoy about Adventist education is the service aspect of it. We went with, we partnered with Texaco Adventist Community Services last year in March, and we took a mission trip to New York to help the people there who had been suffering from a storm that had just hit. This year I'm going to Zambia, Africa with the Texaco Education and Youth Department. If I can go, you can go too. Why don't you consider going with me? Just hope and pray that each one of my students can develop that same close relationship that I've seen in, in my children. Welcome to Crestview Christian Academy. This is the place where our students are learning to become good citizens for this earth as well for heaven. Hello, Jesus. My name is Liliana Graff. I'm the head teacher and also the principal. Here what you see on the back is a mural that parents painted. Our parents are heavily involved and the students are very excited to be here. Our, our families are coming from the churches and our pastors are helping us to recruit all those students. 
We witness uh, in this community very frequently. We go to the nursing home, uh, homes that we have one right here next to us. We pass out cars, we sing. We also go around the neighborhood and, and clean our neighborhood. Um, and we make, make notes that the, the, the city knows that we are outside helping them. We love Jesus. We thank you for the Texaco Conference to support this school. Hi, my name is Kathy. I'm a recent transplant here to Albuquerque, New Mexico. I received a flyer in the mail to come to the Heights in Albuquerque, Seventh-day Adventist, for a seminar on decoding prophecy by M Pastor Mike Sadie. And I felt led to come here and I actually drove by and said I'm not going because I don't know anybody. And I felt like I was being disobedient. So I decided to come to the seminar and was very faithful and met some wonderful people and learned a lot about the Bible. The Sabbath was a huge, a huge truth that I didn't know. It was just never something that I, I knew about. So I feel very compelled now that now that I know it, I have to do it and, and I want to do it. So uh, that is why I got baptized last night to show my faith and I'm very grateful. I was going to a non-denominational church and I just felt a need for more. And I uh, was very happy when I came in and started hearing what um, Mike had to say. Uh, the important thing to me was baptism. I'm happy to be part of the Seventh-day Adventist family. But what really got me here is I, I got the, the Revelation Prophecy mailer. I came to see Pastor Mike and hear what he had to say. And we started really explaining that the Sabbath is not Sunday. And that was, was something that I was raised all my life and believed all of my life until then. There is no support in the Bible for Sunday worship. I knew Jesus was a Jew who never renounced the Jewish faith. And so why did it come to be changed? And you find out that was the Catholic Church changed it. Other churches recognize it for reasons of their own. But the real Sabbath is Saturday. And that's what really opened me up to listen to everything the man had to say. And I go home and I look it up in the Bible myself because maybe this Bible here isn't the same as my King James, and it is the same as my King James. And for the first time in 60 years, I feel like I've found the truth. And because you love Him with all your heart, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you. Jesus' Gospel Commission is still in effect. Jesus is still coming soon. All the signs point to His imminent coming. We have this hope that Jesus will soon return. And it's my privilege and my pleasure to work for Jesus until that great day comes. May God bless you here in the Texaco Conference.